for another episode of Coffee in the Time of COVID-19. This afternoon we will be exploring the Chemex and another one of our Apex coffees right now, a single farmer micro lot from Ecuador from um, a lovely woman named Ilda Maria Mayo. We've had a micro lot from Ilda Mayo um, for two years now. This is the second year and I'm excited to give it a try in the Chemex today. So the grind size, the grind size I'm using for the Chemex is quite a lot coarser um, than of course the AeroPress that we did the other day. Um, if you remember that was pretty fine and this is, um, it's much more possible to detect individual little particles of coffee. I'm looking for a medium coarse grind size because the extraction time is kind of extended. It's, it's quite a lot longer than it is with something um, like an AeroPress or with espresso. The water is going to move much more slowly through the bed of coffee. So in order to not over extract, I want uh, a larger grind size because I don't need as much surface area to get the, all the flavor that I want from the coffee over the several minutes that the water and the coffee will be in contact together. I'm using 30 grams of coffee and I'm gonna brew 500 grams of water. This is kind of my starting point ratio for a Chemex. Doesn't mean it's a perfect ratio, doesn't mean it's gonna be everybody's favorite, but it's my starting point and I tend to find that I like it with this amount of coffee brewed in this size Chemex. So we'll see how it turns out. As I've said before, always a good idea to rinse your paper filter whenever possible. Paper does have a taste, um, and so we wanna get rid of that papery taste in our coffee. It also helps our filter adhere to the side of the Chemex brew funnel. It pre-warms my entire operation. Now I have a nice warm um, Chemex to brew into and also it prevents something called capillary action which I'll talk a little more about in just a second. If I were to put a bunch of dry coffee into a dry filter I would get a little bit of a static um, action. The coffee kind of you know um, jumping up at me a little bit, uh, flying up, sticking to the sides of the filter. What I really want is for this coffee to just settle down into a nice even bed in my filter. Shake it out so it's a little bit flatter, nice flat even bed of coffee. Um, so no capillary action. I'm gonna start here with an initial pour that is roughly twice my coffee dose weight. So I'm at about, I'm at 62 grams here. So just a little more than double my 30 gram coffee dose. Um, and what I've taken to doing of late is actually stirring that initial bloom pour, we call it, um, just to make sure that I'm really kind of priming all of this coffee, getting it ready to give everything it's got to this brew water for even extraction. Um, this is certainly an optional step. It is a variable. It's something you can play around with. Not necessary for a good cup of coffee, but um, I'm learning that it, it does help me get a nice even extraction. So after about um, 30 or 45 seconds have gone on, I've saturated my grind. If you find sometimes that you know, it seems like it's taking a long time for your coffee to drip, um, it's already close to four minutes and my brew funnel seems pretty full still. Um, a little bit concerned that it's not moving more quickly. You know, this is something I can learn from. I can give it a stir. Again, try to make sure I'm getting even movement, water through coffee, and, and accommodate the flow of that water through the coffee bed and let it drip down evenly. I can also say to myself, hey, maybe I should grind it a little coarser next time. And create a little more space between those coffee particles so that the water will move a little more quickly. What I, what I want to avoid is over extraction of these coffee particles. It is possible to get flavors out of coffee that are not delicious. There are sour and bitter notes present in coffee that are not nice. So um, I'm gonna take note of that, 
even as I'm sipping this coffee in a couple of minutes and see if I notice any. Okay, that took a whopping eight minutes to draw down. I'm a little worried. The surface of the coffee looks a little muddy. I really think this is gonna taste a little bit muddy, a little over extracted, a little jammed up. Um, but at this point, all we can do is taste and see. Okay, here I am tasting this coffee. Um, as expected, it is a little less obvious. Um, the, the specific flavor notes are a little less obvious to me. What I'm looking for in this coffee, um, and as we've noted on the label for this coffee, I'm looking for a really nice brown sugar sweetness. I'm getting that. It's still a very sweet and juicy coffee. Um, I'm looking for notes of apricot and hibiscus, kind of a, a nice juicy tang to this coffee, and, and that's a little bit subtle, more subtle than I might hope for in this coffee. That said, it's been about, um, I think, two or three, about two weeks since this coffee was roasted. It's still really pretty fresh but I think maybe it's a little less vibrant than it was maybe.